in this video we are going to set up the rose environment. To do that we need to download first the Ubuntu ISO image. We simply type on your browser search bar Ubuntu download and you are going to be landed in this website. You can see that the latest supported version is Ubuntu 22.04. In order to use the ROSE distribution Notic, we said in the last video that it is supported on UBUP to 20.04. So in order to do not fall in some build error while we are compiling our ROSE code, it is better to download Ubuntu 20.04. To do that, let's go to the top bar, click download and then click on all the releases. Now you can see the Ubuntu 20.04 is available for downloading. Just for information, if you scroll down on this page you can see all the older version as well. Let's click on our distribution we are interested to. We are interested in desktop image. So we are going to click on it and then the download is starting. It might take a while depending on your internet connection. While we are waiting, we can go to our virtual box manager. If you don't have virtual box, just look for it on internet and download it. The procedure is very straightforward. I'm going to put the download link in the description down below. When you open the virtual box manager for the first time, you should see something similar to this layout with the exception that this part here on the left will be empty for you. Now we are going to add another virtual machine. So we click on add button. We select the name of our virtual machine. So let's put Rose Tutorial Ubuntu 20.04. For the moment we don't have yet the ISO image of Ubuntu because it's still downloading, we are going to add it later on. On type, make sure that you select the right operating system. In our case it will be Linux, of course. It remember to us that our guest operating system needs to be installed manually afterwards. Click Next. Now we have to set up the hardware space. I would recommend you to increase a little bit the base memory at least to 4 GB. Then I would recommend you to increase the number of CPU that is going to use your virtual machine. This depends on your local computer. In my case I'm going to put 3 CPU. If you have the possibility to go higher let's do that for example 4 CPU but make sure to do not overpass the red indication in the slide bar. Otherwise you risk to overcharge your local processor. Then click next. Here you have so select the hard disk size. As default it give us 25 gigabyte, but I would suggest you to go for 30 gigabyte. Then you click next. You can see the summary of what we are going to create. Now you can click on finish. And then you can see that the virtual machine is created on the left side of the virtual box manager. We need to set up the network that the virtual machine will use. To do that, let's go to the network section of the settings and in the window attached. Select from the menu, Bridge or Adapter. This allows your virtual machine to get the internet connection of your local machine. Once that the ISO image is successfully downloaded, we can select the virtual machine created and press Start. It open up a new window. 
Here you have to select the ISO image and since that we have downloaded it, we are going to choose others and select the ISO image. Then continue with the process. Now you are seeing that the operating system is booting. The first time this process might take a while. As you might already know, you have these two options to run Ubuntu. Select your language and click Install Ubuntu. Then select your keyboard. Then click continue. Here you can select the type of installation. I would suggest you to select minimal installation, because on the first hand we don't need particular software for gaming or Office 1 for example. Then click continue. Here is asking you if you want to erase your disk and install Ubuntu. For our case it is totally fine because the disk has been created from scratch, let's say from the virtual box manager. If you are not using a virtual machine then you will need to make a partition of your disk, install Ubuntu alongside your Windows operating system. Then you would need to set up a dual boot and select which kind of operating system you want to use. Finally select install now. Click continue. Select your country. Here you can select the name of your account, the username and password. You can select if you want your operating system to log in automatically. Then select continue. Now Ubuntu is installing. Once it is done, you can restart. When the system has been rebooted, now you have Ubuntu 20.04 running properly on a virtual machine. However, when you maximize the screen you can see that it doesn't adapt. We are going to solve now this bother issue. First, let's power off Ubuntu. Go to settings, then display and select in the slide bar of the video memory the maximum 128 MB. Then select start and wait the boot. We can see that the problem persists. Let's go to Devices on the top bar of the virtual machine and then select Insert Gust Edition CD Image.
select Run and Authenticate with your credential. And select the CD image. We need to run this file with the Run extension. To do that let's open the terminal by typing Ctrl Alt and T. Then type on the terminal findment so to see where the file to run is placed. We need to access to the last line folder. Now you can type sudo the last line and the exact same name of the file that we have seen before. Just like I am doing. Type your password. Ubuntu is saying to us to install the GCC Make Perl packages. So let's do it by typing sudo app get update. Then type sudo app get installed build essential gcc make perl dkms. This command is going to install the packages required to complete the installation of our guest edition. As you can see I am adding DKMS. That stands for Dynamic Kernel Module Support. I'm sorry, I have typed mail instead of make. So let's do it again. Once it is done let's run again the VirtualBox Edition's run file. This time it could take a while. Once it is done, it says us that we need to restart the system for replacing the running kernel modules. So let's restart and reboot Ubuntu. Now we can see that if we want to maximize the screen, it adapts automatically. It looks pretty good now.